Hey everybody, my name is Stacy Hoagland. I'm the coordinator of the Florida Partners in Policymaking Program. Partners is an international leadership and advocacy training program for parents of children with developmental disabilities and self-advocates, adults with developmental disabilities throughout the state of Florida. I hope that you will gain information by this presentation of just how fabulous the Partners program is. Uh, but if you don't and you feel like you need a little bit more information, my contact information is going to be at the end. So feel free to contact me with any questions that you may have. Um, and I look forward to seeing your application I look forward to having you in the Partners Program and to really become a member of this very elite advocacy and leadership force within the state of Florida. So the Partners in Policymaking Program is fully funded by the Florida Developmental Disabilities Council. So here you see a little picture on the left that was from a rally at the Capitol a couple years ago. And, um, you know, Partners who are coming through the program are active participants in DD Day in Tallahassee. So that's one of the really great perks of the program is you're going to learn the skills in order to go to Tallahassee and enact change. The beauty of this year's program is that you guys are going to be able to engage in the program from your homes. You're not going to have to track to Orlando and, and you know, for those of you who are parents, figure out, oh my goodness, how am I going to get childcare? Where am I going to find them? Uh, but you're going to be able to do it from home because this year's program is going to be online. And uh, so, but you know, the really the emphasis of the program is to be able to give you the skills so that you can go to Tallahassee, so that you can go to your legislators in your local area, your school board members, your county commission, and be able to talk to them, whether it's in person, on the phone, through a Zoom session, and be able to educate them on what your needs are and how they can help in meeting those needs. So partners in policymaking is all about leadership and efficacy. I mean, we're gonna learn how to be advocates uh, greater advocates within the program. Now, the one thing I will tell you though, this program is not an advocacy training program if you want to learn about how to attend your child's IEP meeting. Uh, there are many other entities out there that can help you with that. The uh, Disability Rights Florida, FND of Florida, uh, Rights Law, if you ever get a chance to go to Rights Law, those are really good. So these are gonna teach you about how to advocate for your child in an IEP meeting. Partners program is much more global than that. We focus on a vast amount of different really hot topics uh, within the disability community. So if you're really looking to branch off and really become that strong and powerful advocate and to become a member of this really elite force of advocates within the state of Florida, then Partners is for you. This was a picture from a couple years ago. Uh, our group uh, of partners were in Tallahassee, as you can see behind them there is the House of Representatives. And uh, they're all not in that picture, but that's a great portion of those who were there that year. And, um, you know, you're going to learn the skills through the program about how to get there, how to be in Tallahassee and how to enact change while you're there. And I know you can't see it too good on the bottom there, but the program begins on September 11th. And in a few minutes, I'm going to give you all the dates if you haven't seen them yet. So the program is fully funded and supported by the Florida Developmental Disabilities Council. The council has been around since 1971 and the council is funded by the Federal DD Act. So um, a couple years ago, they actually had an increase in funds that came out of Washington. And, you know, I don't know what the future is going to hold. I mean, we don't even know about kids going back to school in August. So things, of course, are a little bit up in the air. Um, and that is why it's so important for you to know and understand your rights in all of this. You, you have to understand the limitations. You have to understand that our issues as a disability community, they are civil rights issues. And understanding what that means for you and how to advocate for change in those areas. So the DD Act has funded the Developmental Disabilities Council and they fully fund the Florida Partners in Policymaking Program. The council itself is made up of 29 volunteers that are members of the group. They are all governor appointed, so they're all vetted. Uh, they come from all across our state from various backgrounds, disability backgrounds, geographic backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, you name it. It's a, it's a very diverse uh, group of individuals. 60%, at least 60% of them are people who have a developmental disability themselves which makes it really 
really, you know, a core component to all the stuff that we talk about is how we don't, we, we really don't have the ability to enact change if we do not have a seat at the table. And the partners program really, the focus is on that. It's about teaching you the skills that you need so that you can be at the table. So you could be an active member sitting there. And because these people that are policymakers, they're being influenced, they're making changes. And if you're not there and part of those decisions, then we really can expect to get the outcomes that we're looking for. So the Partners Program is going to teach you the skills that you need in order to enact change, how to you know, be a participant in the Florida Developmental Disabilities Council, uh, about how to speak up for yourselves and your children, and also state agencies are represented on the council. So the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, for example, they are the entity that oversees the Florida Med Waiver Program. So for you guys on here, you should either be you know, uh, participants that you, you know, you, you are on the waiver or you're on the very lengthy wait list. Okay. So you should all be part of that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then partners is for you too, because it's going to educate you about what the waiver program is and why you need it. If you or your child has a developmental disabilities and you live in Florida, you need to know and understand about the Florida med waiver program. So I'm not going to get into that now, but I just want you to know that those people are sitting at the table with the DD council and that's a really allows the council members to influence the APD, right? Um, because if we're not sitting at the same table and having these conversations, we can't expect the outcomes to be any different. Okay, so it's an international program. Partners is an international program. Uh, it's in 45 different states, at least. It fluctuates a little bit uh, from year to year, depending upon funding. But in general, it's between 45 and 48 states across the country. It's in several other countries. It's in Europe, uh, Australia. Um, I think there's one in Japan. So it is a program that really so many humans find great value in. Uh, it's just amazing. Our kind of uh, umbrella program uh, is out of Minnesota. The Minnesota Governor's Council on Disability, they were the ones who actually created the Partners in Policymaking program. The speakers that we get in Florida uh, are fully vetted through a very detailed system of really figuring out who are those speakers that really are the most powerful, who have the greatest uh, really degree of knowledge for the topics that we're going to cover. I'm going to go over those in a few minutes with you guys. But, you know, we really have a very strong emphasis on making sure that those people that come and speak to you, whether it's online or, you know, when we're in Orlando, that they really have a good grasp on the topic that they're speaking of. Um, because, you know, you're, you're, you're giving up your time with your family, on your job, whatever it might be in order to come. And we want you guys to be actively engaged and really gain the information that you need so you can really become stronger advocates. There's over 27,000 uh, graduates of the program worldwide. And um, you know, we want you guys to become another one. All right, so what is the Florida Partners in Policymaking Program? It's a leadership and advocacy training program. So you're not only gonna learn how to advocate, but you're gonna learn how to lead. Uh, just like if you see on the right side of your screen there, you know, he was a member of the program two years ago. We want people from all walks of life. So, you know, good stuff. Um, okay, so partners support individuals with disabilities and their families in their efforts to make an impact on the issues they care about. So really the program is about coming in, gaining really great useful information on a variety of different topics to be able to go back to your home and enact change. So that might be talking to your neighbors about inclusion. It might be talking to your school, to your principal, about how to really build a system of inclusion and inclusionary practices in your school. It's learning about some of those support systems out there that some of you guys come into the program you've never even heard about. For instance, one of the ones that kind of breaks my heart when I have people that say they've never heard of it is the Florida Inclusion Network. Okay, so if you don't know what Florida Inclusion Network is, I want you to Google it right after this is done. Uh, but we have some ladies from the FIN, call it FIN, talk to our participants about how to tap into their services, how to bring FIN people into your school to help educate your school on inclusionary practices and really how to, if it's 30 minutes, if your child, if you're going to work on 
you know, including your kid for 30 minutes a day or all day with the supports that they need, which is what IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, tells us every child should start with an inclusionary education and then services supported to meet their unique needs. So if you've got that kid, you're a parent, you've got that kid who, you know, came out of pre-K and went right into special ed full time in kindergarten, you know, that might not have necessarily been the road to take for some kids. And if everybody agrees, then, you know, that's if that's your choice, of course. And the program is all about choice as well. But we want you guys when you're faced with the choice, right? We don't like it when there's just two because that's not that's not really a choice. 50 50 is not really a choice. We want you guys to have the skills that you need so that you have a plethora of different choices. And then you choose what it is that you feel is best for you as an adult with a disability or you as a parent of a child with a disability. And um, so it's gonna give you, Partners is gonna give you some of those skills so that you can go back and, and you can make things happen. All right, so who's eligible? This is really important. Uh, like I said before, it's a parent of a child, regardless of age. Um, I will tell you that, you know, when you have a young child, it's really great because you're gonna you're gonna be on the front end, right? You're gonna learn those advocacy skills when they're little, so that you learn how to advocate in your school, in your communities, employment opportunities, uh, post-secondary education, uh, access to leisure and rec. Um, I mean, literally, it's it's limitless. And so it's really nice when your kids are young, because you literally have you know. The world before you now that's not to say that if you are an older parent or you're an older individual with a disability that you should not join this program because I have seen people with very young children come into the program and and just make incredible changes in their life um, but I have to say I have not seen a person an adult with a developmental disability come into our program who didn't exit the program with considerable life changes made throughout the program uh, so really, there is no barrier to age limitations. Um, we want all people to be able to make the changes in their life that they want, you know, that they're passionate about. We want you guys to learn the skills that you need so that you can be that change. So you can take it back to your community and you can make it happen. There's 35 people that are chosen for the program. Um, so I want you to apply and there's a process, an application process. It's not really long. I'm going to give you the, the website uh, at the end of this. So uh, just fill out the application. Even if you're sitting on the fence, you should fill out the application. And then, you know, if something comes up where you feel like, you know, you just can't make it for whatever reason, you know, you could talk to me. We might be able to fix whatever the reason is. Um, or, you know, you can just let me know that, uh, you know, something came up and you're not able to. But you want to at least get the application in because this is the last month for it. So you, you want to make sure that you take care of that. There's no charge to participate. It's free. And when you see the lineup of the presenters, you'd be amazed that it's free. Uh, these people are just incredible presenters. You guys are going to have access to so much knowledge, so much wisdom by these professionals that do this. This is what they do for a living. I mean, they travel. They do these massive conferences and share the information. They're going to share with you guys at no charge because the DD Council covers the cost. You're going to get to develop relationships with these people. They give you guys their email addresses, and you're going to be able to ask questions. You're going to be able to raise your hand, even if it's digitally on your keyboard. You're going to be able to ask questions and engage with them, pick their brain as much as you want. Um, you guys are going to have so much information. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's limitless to what you're going to be able to get out of the program. All right, so what do you do as a partner? So you're going to complete a series of training sessions. So there's six months. It's 12 days. When we met in Orlando, which has been the way that, you know, it's been done up to this point, it was two full, really long days. Now, I'm not sitting at a computer all day. That would be, you know, unacceptable to me. So I certainly would not expect you guys to do that. So it's not going to be long days. And we're going to build in breaks. Uh, so we don't expect you to sit at the computer for hours on end and uh, you know just kind of drone out because I know that some of you guys if you're like me you're attending a lot of these online learning things you know whether it's meetings or trainings and uh, you know I think there's gonna be like a new term 
I just, you know, online burnout. And uh, there's such there's such value in being able to work with other people. And uh, right now, of course, because of the pandemic, this is the way we have to do that. And the connections that we make though now, the beauty in all of this is that because we're all online, so it's not just, you know, the average person out there, but it's like, you know, leaders in our community, our legislators, I mean, everybody's meeting online, which kind of makes it easier for us to engage with them because we don't have to go into their office. We can literally have this kind of format where we sit and we talk to really pretty important people that are making those big decisions for you that if you're not engaged with them, they might be making decisions that really aren't for you, but yet they are for you, right? Anyway, um, so you're gonna complete the series of, of trainings, the sessions, uh, state-of-the-art national speakers are gonna cover topics. You're gonna interact with them, ask them questions. Uh, you're gonna complete assignments. I'm gonna go over that in a minute with each session and you do an advocacy project. Now the advocacy project is not due by the end. It's not due by the six months. It's due the next year, okay? So you guys are gonna have plenty of time. I'm gonna help you with your project and how to come up with your project. Your project can be really itty bitty, like in your local community, on your street, in your school, or I mean, you can make international change if you want. So I'm gonna help guide you into what will be manageable for you. Because you know, you find there's some people out there that they're just like great multitaskers. They can just make it happen. They can do a lot of stuff in a relatively small amount of time. And then there are others of us, we need one thing at a time. Just give me my one project, let me get through my one project and then I'll move on to part two. And uh, so we don't want you to bite off more than you could chew because we want you to have a really great outcome. Okay, so I don't want you to get bogged down in the idea of, oh, I gotta do this project. It's not supposed to be scary. It's supposed to be something that you really want to do, something you're passionate about, something that's gonna make your life better, make your child's life better. What are partners in policy making classes like? So I know that this picture, this picture, the guy on the right there is one of our presenters and you can see everybody kind of gathered around him, kind of checking out, he's going over a website with them, showing them how to en engage with policymakers through social media. Now, of course, the class was in person and this year our presenter will be guiding us through the use of technology on how to engage with policymakers. And it's interesting because Yes, there's certainly value in meeting with your policymaker in person. So if you've never met with your member of the House of Representatives or your senator from your area, or even, you know, our, our people up in Congress in Washington, I encourage you to do that. Of course, you can do it safe. So whether it's through social distancing, using a mask, if you, you know, if you can meet with them, great. If you cannot, then don't, you know, we want everybody to be safe in person, but you can literally go on to this kind of format and meet with them. Schedule an appointment with them so that you guys are seeing each other, so that you can talk to him or her, you can engage with them and tell them what is important to you and what do you need? Because the one thing that I always like to overemphasize in the program is those people who are legislators, they get put there to represent you. Sometimes they have to be reminded of that. Same thing with our school board members. Anybody that you guys go out and you vote for, and I encourage everybody to vote, if you're not a registered voter, you know, go out and vote. I mean, that's, that's a civil right that we have. And that's another thing. This program is all about civil rights. Anybody who tells you that the issues of the disability community are not civil rights, they are wrong. Inclusion, accessibility, being able to influence policymakers, having a voice in our communities, those are all civil rights. So don't, don't listen to anybody who tells you that it's not. Uh, so we're gonna teach you guys about that. We're gonna give you the lingo so that you can go. But anyway, in this picture, he's teaching them about social media and how to use social media to influence policymakers. So even before we were kind of all stuck at home, you know, social media, Twitter especially, if you're not on Twitter, and I'm, I'm not a big tweeter, but I am, you know, I follow a lot of legislators on Twitter because right now that tends to be the platform that they're using to get their message out and to engage, some are better at it than others, with their communities. So we're gonna go over all that stuff in the program and teach you guys how to use social media to impact change as well. All right, so where? Now, typically, like I said, we have, up to this point, we have met in Orlando. This year, because of the pandemic, we want everybody to be safe. 
So we didn't want to take any chances on anybody getting sick um, or, you know, just all the challenges. I mean, you got kids at home for those of you who are parents and, uh, you know, we just, we don't, we don't want to cause anybody harm. So this year's program is going to be completely online. Now the goal is because typically with partners, you go to the partners program, you know, once that once a month for the six months, and then we all go to Tallahassee for DD day. And so hopefully because the, the DD day session this year is going to be in March. I don't have a date yet. Um, cause there's, you know, big DD day and, uh, that is part of the partners program that you get to go. If you don't want to go, you don't have to go to Tallahassee uh, for that trip, but, but we all do go. The DD council puts on a really great event. There's a rally. It's, it's truly an incredible day of advocacy in Tallahassee. And we're hoping that that is, we're going to be kind of pass a lot of this so that we'll be able to be there, even if we have to have, you know, some safe precautions put in place, but we're hoping that we're going to be able to be there, but that's kind of up in the air right now. All right, so when? So here are the dates. So as you can see, we start in September and we go through February. And uh, those are locked down. So those dates are their lockdown dates. Partners in policymaking changes lives, right? It changes lives by changing policies. That's, that's how this kind of works. So grad graduates comprise a network of trained advocates and leaders working in partnership with their elected officials to positively change the way people with disabilities live, work, and are educated and enjoy the benefits of being actively involved in their communities. So as you can see there, that was from a couple years ago when our class was in Tallahassee. And uh, that lady there standing at the podium was one of our partners and she was sitting with us and they were discussing a topic that was on the agenda for that day. And she, she leaned over and she said to me, should I get up and say something? And I was like, Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, she learned so much through the project. Um, and being able to watch her get up there and, and I want really you guys to notice something in this picture. If you look at the legislators that are there, they're all looking at her. They're all engaged in what she is saying. And if you have ever gone to a school board meeting or been in Tallahassee or county commission meeting, so often, sadly, they're, they're looking down, they're writing, they might be on their phones, they might be checking their schedule. And, um, you know, one of the skills that you learn through the program is really how to do what she's very effectively doing there. And she's engaging with them. You know, she is, has learned the skills to capture them with her hook, right? That's the first statement that we make when we get up and we want to want to influence someone. And her message was so passionate and so unique because it was from her. It was from her as an individual and uh, really influenced what they had to say. Um, and as you could see, it wasn't just the legislators, but it's the people behind them. And the audience behind me with the camera was the same. And we want you guys to know that you're going to learn these skills through the program so that you can effectively engage with other people to have your voice heard and not come out of one of these meetings feeling like, well, okay, I said some stuff, but did anybody really hear me? So you're going to learn those skills. Here's another really great picture. This was from this year uh, when we were in Tallahassee. And those are a couple of the partners uh, from this year's class on the left. And, you know, they each had appointments. So you could go either on your own, or you can go with fellow partners uh, or with me uh, into meet with legislators while you're there that day for DD Day. And, you know, through the program, you're going to learn how to influence those people that are in a position of power. You know, our legislators hold a lot of power and they're going to be influenced by those people who are coming to them and advocating for yourselves or for your children in our communities. And so, you know, the program is going to educate participants to be those active partners. Now, you see, they're not beating him over the head, right? They're having a good, solid conversation about a topic that is really near and dear to them and to our community. And he's listening to them. He's hearing them because these guys have learned the skills that they need in order to influence others. 
So you're going to develop positive relationships with policymakers and learn how to change the future. Now, I, I am an advocate. That's like, you know, my hat that I have worn for about 22 years now. And I recognize that there are times when our passions need to come out, right? We need to really be assertive in our message. But if we don't spend time developing those relationships, those really positive relationships, when we do go in there with something that really we just can't, we can't, we can't live with, that we really, we really need these people to make change, they're not going to hear us if we've only hit them over the head. So the program is very much a communication program because we want you guys to have those communication skills so that you can take those skills forward and be able to enact change in your community. So a goal of the Partners Program is to train participants in best practices over a wide range of issues. And I'm gonna go over some of those in a minute with you. But it's to help you guys acquire the skills necessary to change systems. So delivery of the skills. So we're gonna go over best practices and state of the art information that's gonna give you the big picture. That's gonna allow you to dream big. Your dreams shouldn't be little bitsy things. You should have big dreams about how to change the world. Yes, change the world. And the world to you might just be those people on your block, right? Because some of us, you know, live in a more, you know, more of a, a communal type of feel. And some of us really see the world as our community. And we want to give you guys the, the skills that you need in order to go back into your homes to enact those changes that are going to benefit not only your own life, but the lives of others who live in your community. And we want you guys to have big dreams. You know, you shouldn't have to settle. You shouldn't be going to meetings if you're a parent at your child's school and they say, well, here you go. This is what you're going to get. That's not what an IEP meeting is supposed to be like. So if, if you have those experiences, that is not good. You are supposed to be a valued member of that IEP team. Okay. It's, it's not supposed to be they create something and you just accept it. Now, if they create something that you like, yeah, you can accept it. That's fine. You know, that would be fabulous. That means that, you know, you got a good school and people are working together really well. So that's really good. But if you want something else for your child, such as inclusion, for example, and they making a suggestion because what it is up until the time of the conversations, those are suggestions. Nothing should be outlined specifically that this is the way it's going to be. You're supposed to come in to those meetings, hearing their suggestions, and then actively engage in the process so that everybody can work together for the betterment of your kids. Same thing up into adulthood and dealing with vocational rehabilitation. I actually have somebody from Voc Rehab that comes on and speaks to you guys, talks a little bit about what the program is like, and, and then we kind of brainstorm about if you're having a challenge with voc rehab in your area, how do you fix that? How do you know your rights when it comes to voc rehab? How do you know your rights with housing? How do you enact the change that you need? All right, so what is your role? Because you have a role in partners. You have to commit it's once a month for six months, and you have to be at all six. You can't miss one because each session covers a different topic. Each one is equally important. So you can't miss one. Now, it's not going to be all day. You know, it's not going to be like when we were meeting in person in Orlando. So, I, again, I understand we, nobody wants to sit at a computer all day. So it's not going to be that. But you're going to have to attend to each of them. They will not be recorded. This is live. This is live education. So they're not going to be recorded. Um, we want you guys to engage. And, in fact, you're going to have to engage. Uh, we're going to, like I said, you're going to have to raise your hand. You're going to have to ask and answer questions. You're going to have to brainstorm with your other fellow partners. They're going to be on Fridays and Saturdays. Now, I put the times that we usually meet there. We usually start at on the Friday at 1230, and we finish up by 4 on Saturday. Now, those times are going to change a little bit because what I'm going to do is I'm going to survey the people who get into the program and see what kind of time slot seems to be best for all of those that you know are going to be in the program 
so I, I am offering a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to the times. And, uh, but we're going to talk about that later because I, I really need to survey you guys and see what you want because I want it to be built around what's most accessible to you so that you guys can truly engage in the program. Uh, again, virtual attendance is mandatory. Um, uh, complete homework. So homework ranges from about two hours to about four hours. Now, don't let that scare you. It's, it's not that bad. Most of it is research-based, where you might have to go and, for instance, find out who your legislators are and send them an email. That's one of the assignments. And uh, if you have a challenge with one of the assignments, you're going to talk to me. You're going to tell me why it's a challenge, and we're going to work together to accommodate or modify the assignment. So don't, don't let that scare you. It's only meant to supplement what you learn when we're in session. Because if all you do is come and you listen, and then you don't do anything with what you've learned, you're not going to hold those skills. You're just not. Our kids don't hold those skills if they don't practice them when they're in school. And you're not going to hold them if you come and you maybe listen because you're multitasking at home at the same time. And if, you, if you're not really engaged and you're not practicing what you've learned, you're, you're not going to hold on to what you've learned. And we want you guys to hold on to what you learned. We want you to be leaders in your communities and advocates. Um, so you're going to implement those skills. And then a major project, like I said, that project is not, you are not turning your project into me during this, during our six months together. That's going to be a year. And it could be, you know, teaching people on your block about disabilities. It could be teaching your school, going and meeting him with your principal and talking to him or her about contacting the Florida Inclusion Network and bringing them in to talk to the parents in your school, talk to the teachers in your school about how to successfully include students or to even just increase the percentage of kids in your school who are included in regular education. Uh, it could be developing a bill. You know, you want to write a bill on um, restraint and seclusion in our schools. That's always a hot topic and which has been really challenged over the years in passing. Maybe that's what you want to do. Uh, you know, so it's literally limitless. You're going to talk to me. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you figure out what's manageable because you guys should not bite off more than you can chew. We want it to be manageable to fit in with your life so that you can, you know, actually make it happen. There's no point in coming up with the creation of this really fabulous idea, but then you've got two jobs and three kids and you don't know how it's going to happen. So we want it to be manageable because we want you to be successful. All right. So here's just some values of the program because I think it's really important that you guys know just like, you know, what is partners like really about? What's the dig deep stuff? Number one, you can see I, I would have written inclusion all up and down that page. Uh, it is all about inclusion. So, you know, if you don't feel that inclusion gives a sense of belonging, that, you know, children shouldn't be included in schools and that people shouldn't be included in the workplace and communities, then this might not be the program for you. Although I will tell you every single year, people come into the program thinking, mm, I don't know about this inclusion stuff. I don't, it's not for me. It's not for my kids. And I haven't seen anybody who hasn't grown in that. And, you know, some people are included for a portion of their day. Some people, it's all day, every day, all the time. And again, it goes back to personal choice and, you know, what you want. But I will tell you that no matter what our topic is each month, we're going to be have an underlying theme of inclusion. Uh, person first language, you know, and the importance of it. And really, it's not just about person first language because there are some individuals with disabilities who care not to use person first language. And you know what? That is a right that you have. I mean, we want everybody to understand that they have the rights to refer to themselves in whatever manner they want to. But in the program, we want everybody to learn how the words that we use influence the perception of other people. And depending upon who you talk to, you have to learn how to alter your own language because your words are influencing others. And we want them influenced positively. We want them to understand that there's value that people with disabilities bring to our world. 
And we need to use re very respectful language when we do that because we want to give off that message that they should be valued, they are valuable, they are part of the fabric that makes us all the human beings that we are. So that's really important to us. Uh, real friendships, you know, it's not just, you know, if you have a personal care assistant and that person is your friend, that's awesome, but they're also getting paid. And so we want people to recognize that that person should not be your only friend. And we're going to teach all of you guys, because some, some of you who are parents, you know, every, every year since I've been in the program, I find parents that come in, their only friends are people that are related to their child's therapy or education. Um, we want you guys to have friends. We want you to have relationships. We want you to have a system of support that's there for you, no matter if it's up or a down day. And uh, so friendships, those are those are really core factor in our program. First Amendment, right to speech. You know, again, you guys have to understand that these are civil rights. OK, and I have been at meetings where I have to remind people that what I'm advocating for is a civil right. Because people are not going to always agree with what you have to say, but being able to pull upon our history as Americans and what our civil rights are um, gives us a lot more of a, of a platform to be able to influence the thought processes of others. And valuable participation. I know you guys can't really see that there too, too well, but you know, being a valued member of the process is a, a core factor in the program. Um, building connections. And again, you're not gonna connect with people if, if you're always carrying the big stick. You're just not. You need the big stick, <laughs> but you might need to leave it in the car or fold it up and put it in your bag. Um, but we want you to have meaningful relationships and connections to those people who are making these big decisions for you. And we want you to be able to be there at the table. Okay. Um, that everybody has to be respected and treated with dignity. And you know what? Every, every year in the program, there's going to be people that don't agree. And that's what makes it a great program because we, you know, if all we do is surround ourselves with people who have the same thinking and same opinions as us, we don't get better. We don't get better at, at how we think about things. We don't get better in our advocacy. We have to see that there's another side. We don't have to agree with it, but we have to learn why do they stand where they stand? Why do they have these beliefs? So that we can then maybe be changed, transformed by their opinion. And, and that doesn't mean that we're going to sway over to their side. That may mean that we need to be thinking about things, knowing that there are a lot of people like that other individual out there. And how are we going to effectively influence them um, if we don't know that those, those opinions are out there? We can't. Uh, learn how to negotiate. You know, every time, if you guys are a parent, every time you go to a child's IEP meeting, you, you're negotiating, right? And if you don't have good skills in that process, you may not come out on the good side of that negotiation. Um, when you are a, an adult with a disability and you go and you meet with your vocational rehabilitation counselor, you're negotiating. Do you want that person just to say to you, well, this is the job that we found for you and you're going to start on Monday and that's it. Even if you don't want that job, does anybody want that? No, I, I don't want somebody coming to me and saying, Stacy, we found you a job. And well, if you don't like it, no, well, that's, you know, it's a job. So just take it. Oh, no. Uh, so we want you guys to learn those negotiation skills so that you can go make better things happen for yourselves. Uh, right to true choice. If your choice is like in housing is live with your mom or live in a group home, that's not really much of a choice. Now, not that you wouldn't choose one of those. So if you want to choose one of those, that's your choice. But we want you guys to know that there are other options out there. There's supported living. There, there's, there's so many different options and you're gonna learn about those choices through the program. And if you choose one of those, like if you choose the group home, even after you experience all the rest, then that's your choice. But your choice shouldn't be a 50-50. You know, that's, that's not a choice. So you're gonna learn that stuff. And access to employment supports, community supports, how to be active members, how to be valued, 
in your communities and really understand how to do that, right? How to be a participating member of your community. All right, so the topics that we cover throughout the course of the program. First weekend, we're going to spend getting a little bit get to know you sort of stuff, but the history of the disability movement. Because you know what? If you don't know where you came from, it's really hard to figure out where you're going to go. And what we really want people to learn is how to recognize when history and not always good history um, comes back around and repeats itself. Right. We don't want to go back. So we want to be able to recognize the big flags when they're out there, but you can't recognize them if you don't know where we came from. So that's our that's our first weekend. Um, inclusive education and transition. Assistive technology. You know, some of my friends that are my most the most passionate advocates that I know um, use assistive technology to communicate. I mean, we all use technology, right? I mean, I use my phone. I use my phone for my schedule. I use my phone uh, for like communication, right? For, for like everything. So we all use assistive technology and we want you guys to learn what options are out there, where to get assistive technology, where to get assistive technology supports and support systems. Supported, supported and competitive employment. You know, some of us, we can get a job and we can be on our own, but some of us still need supports on the job site. And so we're going to cover some of that supported in independent living. Again, being able to make those choices of where you want to live as an adult person centered planning. Like I said before, you know, we shouldn't let other people just make the big decisions for us. And that doesn't matter who you are. You know, you have to be part of the process. You have to be part of the decisions. And um, if you don't have a voice and you don't have the skills that you need in order to be that, to understand what your rights are or to be able to support your children um, in the decisions that need to be made with them for their for their life I mean you know they're gonna be the person that are gonna live with these decisions as they grow up into adulthood and so we want to be able to know how to teach our kids how to be self-advocates and and that's regardless of of you know how independent you think that they are um, some of the most forward thinkers that I know need support they just do that doesn't mean that they can't make those big decisions so um, all right so community support state and federal legislative processes you know there's for you guys who don't really understand the whole legislative stuff you know there are different processes from when you're dealing with your school board your county commission, your state legislators, our con you know Congress, uh, our president, and we want you guys to have the skills that you need and understand that whole process. And uh, you guys are going to hear some from great presenters when it comes to that uh, leadership development. And don't get scared, because you know there are some people that will say, "Oh no, I, I just I can't. I'm really scared. I don't have the skills that I need." I don't have the skills that are needed to stand before a group of people and, and talk about, you know, uh, what the challenges are. You're going to learn that stuff. You're going to learn how to communicate. You're going to learn that, you know, you don't have to stand in front of a Senate committee in order to influence senators. We're going to go over all that stuff. Uh, organizing for systems change. So how to go back into your community and really rally the troops, right? Rally the troops and making something really positive happen. So this is Becky. She was in the program a couple years ago, and uh, that is, I think it's the Senate behind her. And, um, you know, you could, when we go to DD Day, you get to go up in the gallery there and, and uh, hopefully, you know, the Senate or the House are in session. You get to sit and you get to kind of see how government works. And, you know, a lot of us, if all we ever learn about government is by watching, I don't know, C-SPAN or your local news station, I have to tell you, there is nothing like being there. It's going to give you a whole new perspective on how these decisions are made and truly how influential you can be. And I know a lot of people kind of feel, oh, it doesn't matter. It does. I've seen it time and time and time again. Your advocacy does matter. It does make change. But if you're going to just wait for somebody else to be the advocates, then yeah, maybe, maybe it won't. Maybe it will, maybe you get lucky, but maybe it won't. 
So, uh, you know, partners meaning to me, you know, getting connected, speaking up, educating, communicating on inclusion, quality education, not just sending your kids to school and, and not seeing any progress, but quality, meaningful progress. Your children, regardless of who they are and what kind of needs they have, should be making meaningful progress in school or else why you send them to school. So you need to know about those rights. <clears throat> Accessible housing. Uh, housing is a huge issue in the state of Florida. So you can learn some of those skills that, that gives you the power that you need in order to influence people who are in a position of power about housing and employment. You know, it might be supported employment, might be competitive employment, whatever it is that you need. Uh, building positive relationships, right, with other families, schools, employers, elected officials, um, learning how to impact your local, state, national government, influencing the lives of people with disabilities uh, for the better so that as adults, they can be more engaged with all of us so that it's not, you know, a bunch of group of parents, they're going and advocating, but it's actually parents with self-advocates and, and everybody working together to take the issues that really weigh so heavily on our community to those people who are making these policy changes. Understanding the strategies, right, that you need in order to enact change. Um, it's, you have to understand how to communicate and how to make these things happen. It's, it's not so easy to understand how to advocate if you don't have the education on how to do it. And that's what Partners does for all the graduates of the program. They all come out of the program talking about how they're so much better equipped to influence others, to make those big ticket items not become such a challenge. All right, so how do we get there through advocacy? You know, I, I wish it wasn't true, but when you live in the disability community, whether you are a person with a disability yourself or a parent of a child, when we wanna see great things happen, we have to advocate. I very rarely see somebody come out with a silver platter and say, what would you like? We have all these services. You know, when my son was very young, and I went to his pediatrician and I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's up with him. I, I don't know. Um, but we're having all these challenges. And I went over some of the challenges that I was noticing in this very young child. And, and he said to me, oh, give him time. He's the right weight. He's good height. And it took advocacy. I had to advocate for a diagnosis. I had to advocate for him to get into a good school. I had to advocate for inclusion. I had to advocate for our transition. I had to teach him advocacy skills so that he could get to the next level for himself. I had to advocate for access to post-secondary education and employment. And I, I would love to tell you that you don't have to advocate to make great things happen, but I cannot. And so this, this program is gonna teach you guys the advocacy skills, the leadership skills that you need. Um, on the left there, you're gonna see a picture there of Lauren. Um, Lauren received an award this year by her fellow partners. Each year in the program, the, the participants in the program nominate a fellow partner and who really exemplifies what the program is all about. And this year they identified Lauren as being just that person. And then in the, on the top slide there, that was our group from this year. So those are the partners that graduated this past year and uh, truly a, a fabulous group of, of parents, of self-advocates, um, as you can see, uh, there's males, there's females. We really strive for participants from across the state of Florida, from the Panhandle all the way down to Key West. And actually, I mean, each class really has that. I mean, we, we really try to get people from every ethnic group, every geographical group, uh, all different types of disabilities. Um, so we just want you guys to know that uh, diversity is key to our program and uh, so don't let anything hold you back in, in applying for the program. The application is only open for another month, so you want to get your application in. Even if you're really not positive about if you're going to be able to do it, I encourage you to apply because uh, you can always let us know later, oh, you know, something came up, um, you're not able to do it. Um, but if you don't get your application in, of course, once the time frame lapses, you're not going to be able to get in. Um, 
So this is for the 2021 program. It's going to start in September. It goes through February. DD Day is hopefully going to be sometime in March. I do not have a date yet on that. So you get to go to Tallahassee if you know if we're if we're all good with um, our pandemic. Um, if selected, uh, you're going to get to participate in these two-day sessions um, and reimbursements provided. So if you are a parent of children and you're not going to be able to sit at your computer because you've got the kids in the background and, and they're jumping around and they need you, right, as their parent, their caregiver. If you need to get someone to help you with your children so that you can engage, there's reimbursements uh, that are provided by the Florida DD Council for that type of expense. So don't let that be a factor for you. We recognize that that's going to be a challenge when you're in your homes, that you've got the kids around. So we're going to we're going to be helping with that. So, you know, I just want you guys to see this picture. This was, this was from a class a couple years ago. And, you know, when we advocate on our own, we can we can make things happen. You know, we can be we can be effective. I don't think we could be very widely effective, but we can be effective. But when we come together, and it's not just, I'm not going to say it's with like-minded individuals, because if you look at that group of people, they didn't agree on everything. And that's the beauty of the program, is that there's diversity from one opinion to the next. And we don't grow as individuals if we don't learn how to work collaboratively with others that we may not have the same opinions as. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It turns us into more well-rounded well individuals. and uh, But I will tell you that we really can't make those big things change that we really need without working with others. And that is a core component of the Partners Program is to learn how to work with others, how to actively engage with others, how to influence others, how to go to Tallahassee together, how to go to your school board meetings together, how to speak as one voice on particular topics and learn how to discuss the areas that we may not have one voice and how that's not a bad thing, but how we can come together on the really key factors that are really very detrimental to the disability community. And if we don't have a voice, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So this is me and where you can submit your application. So again, my name is Stacy Hoagland. And uh, so you could get me at spartner at gmail.com. If you wanna reach out to me, there's my physical address as well. My number is below that 954 number. I know you can't see the 800 number next to it. I'm sorry about that. But you can get me at the, that that's my home number actually, that 954 number. So if you don't get me, you can leave me a message. I will call you back. Uh, the best way really is usually my email address like with most people these days. You can get me there. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, the Florida Partners in Policymaking Program. You can get me through the Facebook page. And I'm actually gonna upload this onto the Facebook page as well, so you guys can check it out there. And um, if you go onto fddc.org, you're gonna see the application there. But if you want an application, you can email me and I will send you the application. Then you're just gonna send it right back to me. So it's a really easy process. It's not a very long and arduous application. Um, so don't, don't worry about that, uh, you'll see. And you know, I really just wanna thank you guys. I wanna thank you for your engagement in um, you know, just learning more about the partners program and just how valuable it can be to you. And again, here's, little, here's just me again with some contact information and uh, so you can reach out to me um, when you need. So I wanna thank you guys again for you know, following along with this presentation. I hope that you got some valuable information from it, but if you have any questions at all, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to fill you in on you know, more details about the program, what you can expect. Uh, but I just, I don't think that you could talk to a partners graduate in the state of Florida that wouldn't tell you just how life-changing partners was for them. It is truly one that brings such value to lives, not only the lives of those who participate in the program, but to those you're gonna influence, because I can guarantee you one thing, throughout the program, while you're in the program, you're going to be influencing others. When you graduate from the program, you're going to be influencing others. You're going to take the skills that you learn in the program and you're going to change things. You're going to change things for yourself, for the lives of others. You're going to change politicians. You're going to change the platform that some people have. 
you can make really great things happen. I have yet to see a partner who has come through the program that hasn't gone forth and made some really positive changes in their lives and the lives of others. So I encourage you to apply. I encourage you to become an active member of a very elite force of advocates, not only in the state of Florida, but throughout our nation. And again, thank you guys. Stay safe, stay well, and uh, fill out an application. Have a good one. Bye-bye.